Greetings everyone, once again it's Mota Mwadidi sharing the authentic truth brought to us by Zulu Lassan in this time, in this era. So we're going to be sharing another teaching here, it's going to be the continuation of The Angels Are Black Part 2. <clears throat> We've made Part 1, we received some reactions, some people shared, some other people disagreed, tried to argument, but they did not use the scriptures, they did not use even the current classical day Bible to try to argue, to, to make their point. They're always going outside of the scriptures. So here we're still going to be using the current classical day Bible to prove to you that the angels are in fact black and that according to the current classical day Bible that even you have. And we know that in Bibel it's specified Bell, the only authentic Bible without any errors or contradictions. So, um, first, <clears throat> I would like to answer one person who commented that uh, the and that the personage that came that appeared to John in Revelation um, chapter one, verse fourteen, toward verse sixteen and eighteen, he argument that no, that was actually the Christ and not an angel. Well, it was an angel that appeared to John in Revelation. If you read carefully Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, it says this, the revelation from Christ which God gave him to show his servant what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. So, as you can read here, that revelation was made known to John via uh, through an angel. <clears throat> so even if the angel says in the current classical day Bible that I am the living one, I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Even though the, uh, the, the angel says that, that doesn't mean that's the Christ. Even if for your comprehension, those are the words that Christ would use. Because if you read <clears throat> uh, Revelation 22, verse 6, before I read Revelation 22, verse 6, you have to understand that it is the angel that is speaking on behalf of the Christ. So even if the angel is using the word of Christ, it's still through him, is the one who's saying those words on behalf, on behalf of Christ. So in Revelation 22, verse 6, it says, the angel says to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophet, sent his angel to show his servant the things that must soon take place. So you say here, the Lord, the God who inspires the prophet, sent his angel. And he says in verse 6, the angel said it to me. So it's the angel that was speaking to him. Verse 7, he says, look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the word, the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. And verse 8, so Revelation 22 verse 8, I, John, I am the one who heard and saw these things, period. And when I had heard, heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me, period. So here is clearly says that it was the angel that was showing those things to John. And it was the angel also that was speaking to John. So anybody out there who will, will try to argue that it is the Christ, read carefully Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, read carefully Revelation 22, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, verse Chapter 22, verse 6, 7, and 8. Okay? I'll continue here. I'll repeat here. Verse 8. So Revelation 22, verse 8. I, John, I am the one who heard and saw these things, period. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. Verse 9. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant, servant with you and with your fellow prophet and with all who keep the words of this scroll, period. Worship God. So, as you can see, John clearly clarifies that it, it, was, it was an angel that had shown him those things and that was speaking to him. And that angel was sent, according to the current classical day Bible, uh, he was sent by God and by the Christ. 
uh, I repeat again, by, according to the current classical day Bible. So here now the teaching the angels are black part two. Uh, I will take another verse once again that shows where an angel appeared in the current classical day Bible and how that angel is described once again. So for that, we will go in Daniel chapter 10, verse 4. He says this, Daniel chapter 10, verse 4. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, verse 5, I looked up and there before me was a man dressed in linen, comma, with a belt of fine gold from a faz around his waist. Verse 6. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. So as you can see, that's the a similar description that John saw in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. So here in Daniel 10, Daniel was by the bank of the great river of Tigris. And where is that river? You have to understand that that was in East Africa. I've shown the map already where the biblical history happened. And the Tigris that was in uh, ancient Babylon and that was in East Africa. We have the map that proves that. So that's not in Middle East or somewhere else. No. And verse 5, he says... That man was dressed in linen, and you have to understand that man, it was a spiritual entity. It was an angel that, vi that came, uh, that Daniel saw. And he had a belt of fine gold from Ophaz around his waist. And in verse 6, his body was like topaz. So the body was like topaz, so that's a precious stone. His face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arm and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze. Now, what is burnished bronze? In other verses, it will say brass. It will say, uh, or, or simply um, burned, burnt. And bronze, you have to understand that it's brown. You know, bronze and brass are brown. And when you burn it, it becomes black. So as you can see, once again, that entity, that angel that Daniel saw in Daniel 10 is he was black. And his voice like the sound of a multitude. So, <clears throat> that is the truth. When you read in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8, uh, that's where he mentioned how the current classical day Bible, how people have, fals have falsified the scriptures to try to introduce, try to hide the truth. And he says in Jeremiah 8.8, 8, How can you say we are wise, for we have the law of the Lord, comma, when actually the lying pen of the scribes has handled it fal falsely? In New King James Bible, it says this, How can you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Question mark. Look, the false pen of the scribes certainly works falsehood. So what does that mean? That means that the people who have written the current classical day Bible, the people who have claimed to have translated the original text, the so-called original text, they've made it a lie. They've added falsification that they changed names, places of birth, colors, and they tried to hide the truth. That's why they've invented that personage of Jesus. They've tried to say, no, he came 2,000 years ago. They tried to change his color, his places of birth, and so on. So they've changed the history of the prophet. They've tried to change and falsify the history of the prophets like Moses and, and so on to try to make them white or, or that they are so-called the so-called fake Jews. But in their doing, he says here that it, it was in vain. Why is it in vain? It's in vain because the truth is being restored, meaning we have the champion in our time, which is Zulu Lassan, He's who is, has given us, who is giving us the teachings of the truth, where he established and 
um, expose the lies that they have written, that they've tried to um, indoctrinate to people, that they've tried to persuade, and that the many so-called churches are uh, believing. <clears throat> in the original King James Bible, in Jeremiah 8.8, 8, it says, The pen of the scribes is in vain. Is in vain. And in the Christian Standard Bible, it says this, The lying pen of the scribes has produced falsehood. Har Aramaic Bible in plain English, Truly the lying pen of the scribes is made for falsehood. Contemporary English Version, Jeremiah 8.8 8. <clears throat> But I say to your teachers, have but I say that your teachers have turned my words into lies. So that's what they've done. That's what they have. That's what they've done toward the centuries and for many, many, many years. They've falsified the scriptures. They've tried to falsify what truly happened because they had some copies. They, they heard what happened in ancestral Africa and they appropriated that history for themselves and they've erased, they've tried to erase who have given them those texts and they've changed the names, the places of birth like I've mentioned and tried to make it as if it was them as if the scriptures came from them and those are the, are the scribes, those who have written or translated or copied the current classical day Bible that you have. And that's why those Bibles are full of lies, contradictions, errors, and mistakes. And we have the authentic version that is being that was restored. The only authentic Bible. So the original text. And in the original text, when we go in Daniel chapter 10, verse uh, well, it's in the current classical day Bible, it, it's Daniel chapter 10, verse 6. But in Bibel, it's Daniel chapter 12. And starting in verse 5, it says this. <clears throat> it says in Daniel 12, verse 5. On the 24th day of the first month, Comma, I was at the edge of the great Mopi in bracket river, which is Pele Pele Ideker, with some men. Period. I lift up my eyes and looked, and behold, there was a man of our black race clothed in linen and having a belt of pure gold upon his kidney. So, where the kidney is, where the loins, loins are. And verse 7, so I'm translating here in English. Verse 7, his body was like crystal light. His face shone like lightning. His eyes were like flames of fire. His arm and feet were like polished brass. The sound of his voice was like the sound of a multitude. So, that's the true that's the truth he specifically mentioned here that in verse 6 there was a man of our black race and that's what they've tried to raise after what they've tried to remove and clothed in linen and he says that his arms and feet were like polished brass so it's also like the bronze and that's black and specify the race of that angel. So the angels are black. That's the fact is mentioned, is proved even in the current classical day Bible and also in Bibel, the only authentic Bible. So you out there who agree, that's because you like the truth and the truth makes you happy. 
But who you out there who disagree because you don't like the truth, you don't like the fact that we're, we're specifying that the angels are black, and you're trying to argument because you don't like the truth, you, you're now trying to say that, no, it doesn't matter which color they are. When they were referred to as white, that suited you. But now that they were, were proving to you that they were, in fact, black, now it no longer arrange you, it no longer um, suits you. So that's only your opinion. That's only your way of seeing things. If you say for you it doesn't matter, that's only in your own conception of truth of things in your own comprehension. The truth does matter. It does have an importance. They have falsified the history of the Christ. They've changed his color they, and they've tried to introduce that fake personage of Jesus. And a lot of black people are accept, have accepted that personage of Jesus as white. But now that we're proving that he was in fact black, and that Jesus never existed, that white personage never existed, but the true Christ was in fact black. Now, now all of a sudden his, co his color no longer matter, you see. Because they are um, hypocrites. They're hypocrites and um, they don't like the truth. They are in confusions. And they are trying to do mental gym gymnastics to try to uh, come come up with arguments uh, to justify their belief in the lie. <clears throat> so, just um, just one point about the personage of the Christ. If you read even in the current classical day Bible in Matthew chapter 1 verse 3, you're told about his gen genealogy. And his ge in his genealogy, you're told that he came from Tamar. And Tamar was a Canaanite. And we know that the Canaanites were black. So that I means why then are they drawing him when they're making the, the pictures, the images, they're putting him as white? When in fact, when we look at his genealogy, when we look at his ancestors, even according to the current classical day Bible, he was black. Some people will try to argue that no, um, <clears throat> uh, he, it doesn't have an importance. It does have an importance. The truth does matter. So that was part two, that the angels are black, and that's biblical, historical, spiritually, that's the truth. That is the truth. And um, all glory to Loba, the only and unique creator.